Government borrowing has surged to its highest level on record, underlining the scale of the economic damage caused by the coronavirus pandemic. The deficit, the difference between government spending and tax receipts, soared to more than £62 billion in April, underscoring the level of financial support offered by the Treasury to help businesses and employees through the crisis. Our economics editor, Faisal Islam, has more details. In normal times, businesses such as Fitbakes in Northamptonshire make sales to big sandwich stores and cafes generating VAT, they pay corporation tax, business rates and wages to staff mean income tax and national insurance. Now far less of that is happening in the coronavirus pandemic, just online orders. And instead of adding to the Treasury coffers, many staff wages have been paid by the taxpayer. Times this by a few million and you get massive and historic levels of public borrowing. Here at the Treasury, the money coming in is slumping, the spending going out is surging. It always happens during a recession, but never quite like this. Last month, the difference between the two, borrowing or the deficit, was at £62 billion for April. A record and more in one month than had been planned at the budget for the entire year. But that doesn't include everything. The entire cash requirement of government was £88 billion in April. Again, a record. And you can see why by looking at how taxes coming in have fallen off a cliff. VAT receipts were down £14 billion on last April, partly due to a policy of delaying payments. Income tax and national insurance was down £6 billion on last April. Corporation tax revenues and stamp duty were also down billions. And in the same month, huge rises in spending to £14 billion spent paying the wages of millions of workers under the jobs retention scheme. £7 billion extra in public spending, mainly health, things like buying protective equipment, a billion extra on benefits and universal credit. Add all of that together, an annual public borrowing is heading above £300 billion. That's 15% of the value of the entire economy not seen in peacetime, not since the end of the Second World War. If you think back to pre-2010, we had debt levels of around 40% of GDP. We'll be around 100% by the time this crisis is done. But the really important thing to remember is it's not just the level of the debt that matters, it's what it's costing us. So debts are mounting like never before, but the costs of funding them also tumbling like never before. At one point this week, the Debt Management Office, which borrows these record amounts, borrowing billions at negative rates, being paid to borrow rather than paying to borrow. It won't last forever, but for now the government has space to delay, taking the toughest tax and spend decisions. Faisal Islam, BBC News. Well, the hole in government finances wasn't helped by a big drop in retail sales. They plummeted by a record amount in April. As many high street stores closed because of the coronavirus, the Office for National Statistics says the amount of goods sold fell by 18%. Clothing sales were the biggest hit, down more than 50%. But with most shops shut, there's been a boost in online spending, which rose nearly 31% compared with March. Here's Emma Simpson. The shoppers vanished and so did the sales. Today's figures reveal the scale of the damage, touching every high street and all the businesses in them. The owner of this chain says our shopping habits have now changed. Retail will never ever be the same again. Every year we were seeing a higher uptake in online sales in comparison to retail sales. What this lockdown has done has it's probably accelerated, in my personal view, the whole transition by at least five years. There'll be less footfall on the high street, which will mean that we have to decrease our fixed costs. If they don't change, what you're going to see is empty stores. It's very simple. If your costs are more than the money you're bringing in, you can't survive. There's already a battle for survival. This Debenham store in Swindon won't be reopening, along with many others. Laura Ashley is also in administration. Warehouse, Oasis and Kath Kidston stores are disappearing altogether. Coronavirus has been the final straw for weaker retailers already struggling with our changing shopping habits. The pandemic is turbocharging this trend and as shops begin to reopen, businesses will have to adapt. 
Lee's doing that with his gift shop, boosting online deliveries. From the age of eight, he wanted to run a shop, but he knows he might have to go online only if he can't make the sums add up. Can't beat them, join them. We don't want to go solely online. This is why we will exhaust every single avenue to get out to our customers and ultimately see how they want it to be taken. How do they want their business, their something different to provide for them? Customers are still shopping. Down the road, this bike shop's never been busier. It's not all gloom, but this crisis will have an impact on retail long beyond the easing of the lockdown. Emma Simpson, BBC News, Swindon. The company which owns the coach firm Shearings has gone into administration. The specialist leisure group, which is based in Wigan and employs more than 2,500 people, also runs the brand's UK breakaways, Caledonian Travel and Country Living Hotels. Well, our North of England correspondent Judith Moritz is outside their headquarters for us tonight. Judith, had this been on the cards? It had, and you know, you may not have heard of the specialist leisure group, but chances are you do know its brands from national holidays to Wallace Arnold and Shearings, Europe's largest coach tour operator, a company whose roots go back to 1903, and a company which is loved predominantly by older customers uh, who are prepared to travel off peak to fill hotel beds at that time of year. And so this is a blow to the, the travel industry uh, year wide. 64 thousand bookings now to be cancelled. The majority of those are package holidays for which customers will have financial protection. They're eligible for refunds. But a blow across the industry for the employees, two and a half thousand people here in Wigan, the vast majority of whom had been furloughed by the government during the coronavirus epidemic. That uh, now means that they will be made redundant other than a small number being kept on here to wrap up the business. And the, the travel trade organisation, ABTA, has said this is a stark illustration of how tough things are for the holiday industry at this time. Mm. Judy, thank you. Judith Morris there in Wigan.